So I want to get back to work on this truck again. And uh, so I've been out here kind of cleaning up the bed and cleaning the trash out of it. And I, I want to cut the bed. So I took a tape measure to it and I've been measuring things out and I've been reading on online to see what other guys have done, what measurements they've used. Um, so everybody's using the four inches in the back, 16 inches in the front of the bed and removing those sections and shortening the bed and bringing it back together. Um, so this seems like a pretty intimidating project, but after taking the measuring tape to it and looking around at the bracing underneath it and what's under the bed, the flat sections in the frame underneath there, this doesn't look like too bad of a project. And I really want to see if we can do it in a weekend, just like the average guy in his garage, can he unbolt the bed, measure it out, cut it, cut the frame, and bring it back together, and minus the drive shaft, have a rolling chassis again by the end of the weekend. Um, after I've taken some, I put some tape on this thing and marked out where my cuts would be and kind of walked through where the braces were. Um, this looks like it's pretty doable. There's not a whole lot of hardware to remove. Uh, the rusty bolts would be a pretty good challenge, it looks like. If you had an exhaust that went the full length of the truck, you'd have to somehow cut and section that or just remove it. Um, and then pulling the, pulling the trim off, my trim just uh, just fell off. I was trying to measure around it and noticed that it was just flopping and held on by like two small clips here. Uh, I'm not sure how it made it home actually on the trailer. I'm surprised it didn't just blow off on the highway somewhere. But nonetheless, it didn't. Uh, emblems are here, trim's still here. So I'll kind of walk you guys through where I'm at now and what my plans are. And I'll see how far we can get. So I think what I'll do is walk through what I've measured out, kind of a plan of attack, and then start pulling these rusty bolts out. The aftermarket bumper has to come off. The, I think there's eight bed bolts I counted. Those have all got to come out. And then put a couple supports in here and work on lifting this bed off. So here's my plan of attack. So I've got 16 inches that I want to pull out between these tape marks here. This truck has got an extra gas tank that runs like a big length underneath the bed here. Uh, so I have to pull that out. The nice part is that this hole that you might have to contend with otherwise is just erased now because we take this whole section out. Uh, luckily for me, if I cut it here, I lose this body damage and then hopefully we can pull this body line and this body line back together. I've got a kind of a nasty little dent here. I'm going to try to get my friend who does PDR to come help me out with. But it looks like there's only four braces that are bolted to the frame. So I marked those here in blue so we can hopefully understand like we're looking at the end of a brace here. So I'm just trying to paint like a visual image of kind of what you would see as the, the skeleton of the truck here. Um, so there's a brace one, brace two, brace three, and brace four, five. And the rear one back here is not really a brace, but more of a, a place where it just bolts to the frame. Uh, so if we go back to the front and look at this big section we're looking at cutting out, um, this is a brace only. This is not actually any place that the bed physically bolts to the frame. Uh, everywhere else it looks like the frame the frame, and the bed would both come together here. So this hole would stay lined up and with the frame as it is locked in place here and moves forward. So there would be no, no re-drilling of holes here or anything. So but this brace will come out. And if we look at the, I was concerned, but maybe it's going to make it kind of weak. Um, so I think here to here was around 26, 27 inches. I forget exactly the measurement. But then with the distance and the braces over the axle back here is actually longer. So I don't think it's going to be a problem because this brace here is going to slide 16 inches closer 
to the front brace now. So I think it'll all work out and be plenty strong. This truck's not going to haul anything anymore. I'm not going to stack any giant heavy loads in it or anything. So the whole point of that was to kind of try to give you guys an idea of uh, what the bed it would look like structurally underneath. So you guys around what I've done. All right, so here's the back. And I've been junkyard shopping. I got a good deal on a rusty old tailgate. Um, I got the hardware and stuff too, but my hope with at least getting a tailgate was that I could stick it across the back of the truck here and it would square up and give me some point of reference to keep the the back of the truck as square as possible. So as we cut this, or I cut this, I don't end up with a, some sort of tilted in box or pinched in box in the back. So here's the inside of the bed where that filler net goes through. So there's actually a big hole that either Ford or the dealership, whoever installed that bed cap there, cuts in the bed floor to run that filler neck down through there. Uh, it, just, it just so happens that's right in line with the 16 inches that we want to remove from here to that tape mark there. So that whole section oops, move this trim, of the bed would essentially disappear. So that hole would just be gone. Um, I realize a lot of guys don't have this uh, extended mileage tank. Um, but for those of you that have one, at least you can follow along here and see what I do to solve the issues of dealing with it. Here's this bed cap we were looking at earlier. So you can see, just a big old giant hole. Looks like they cut out the cutting torch or something almost. Just goes straight down to the floor there. That filler net comes up through there and the vent line's there. But yeah, you can see the ground.
All right, so I just put some scrap metal I have laying around here as bracing this bed. And what I did is just put a piece here behind where I'm going to cut. So here's a brace, and then the yellow marks you can see, we're going to cut from here to here and cut this front section of the bed out. This will stay with the bed, and then when we're done, we'll just cut this out. And then same with the rear, piece of scrap metal. Um, if you guys are interested or you care, the I made a mark here 21 inches from this back line just to put this piece of bracing in here. This is just temporary. Um, but if you want to follow and use a, the same measurement, you certainly can. It seems like it's going to work out okay because we're going to cut back behind this section here. So this part of the bed will fall off temporarily. The brace will stay with the main wheel well section of the bed here. Okay, so I crawled around under the bed. I got the bed all unbolted from the bottom. I guess the bed bolts are still sitting here, but they're all uh, they're all loose. And just take them out. Uh, I would recommend replacing those if you're going to try to do this in a weekend. Also, these things are all terribly rusty, and I had to heat them up a whole lot to like break the nuts loose on them and actually get them out of the truck from the bottom. So I think I'll just call LMC or somebody and order a bed bolt kit for these things. Uh, besides that, there was a that external fuel tank underneath the truck was a nightmare. It was all kinds of bolted in there. It had this giant sheet metal steel protective tank skid plate below it. Like the thing probably weighs 30 pounds, and I'm not sure why they thought the regular tank wasn't strong enough it appears to be though I think it's a metal tank the bed seems to weigh more than I thought it would just being underneath it and pressing up on it it's got a significant amount of weight um, but I got it marked up ready to go where I want it where I want to make my cuts we'll walk through that in a minute but right now we'll try to get this bed lifted up off of this truck Well, it's a part. Uh, so there's the rusty old frame. Kind of got some funny discoveries. The uh, take this camera off here. So the bed wiring I was pretty surprised. It was just a, uh, a single harness here. So the one harness for brake lights, turn signals, uh, tail running lights is one plug that just disconnects here so that makes the uh, the wiring for the bed come apart pretty easily I had one bolt here that I didn't realize was still attached I had to, had to cut that one to get it out and it was still hanging down like in the structure of the bed and started to lift the truck up with the lift so once I did it lifted the bolt up I stuck a grinder in and cut it off 
Uh, so this is kind of interesting here. It looks like they, uh, somebody along the way, welded in this giant angle iron here and put like uh, build your own gooseneck hitch in this thing. It looks like so there was some giant plate that would mount here on the bed, and there's some angle iron here. It's it's thicker than the frame is. Like the thickness of the frame is, I don't know, it might be eighth inch or something. And this stuff is huge. It's like. I don't know, three sixteenths, maybe quarter inch angle iron. It's monstrous. So here's that giant tank I was talking about. You can see the tank just goes from this cross member all the way up underneath the cab. Underneath there. It's huge. Uh, so I think I'm just going to take that tank out of there and like, maybe somebody will use it for something else. Maybe somebody like on a there's somebody building a truck that they want to put back to being original or they want a camper special or something. I don't know what that tank goes to, if it was ever even factory equipment. The way it was put in there is kind of funny. There's some there's some pretty boogery looking welds. Like around there's brackets on bottom that hold the thing in. Looks like it's just a piece of square stock somebody cut open. And there's some pretty boogery welds underneath the frame that bolt that thing into the mounting tabs there. Um, anyway, frame looks nice and clean, so... So I'm going to put a plan together here to cut and section this bed. There's a couple brackets that are going to have to come out. This one bracket here looks like it's just for a tank. That auxiliary tank was hung by this bracket. So a couple bolts that will come out. There's an exhaust hanger bracket on that side. Uh, they'll have to come out it looks like so we can section the bed. It might end up popping a few holes back to ring hang that exhaust. Um, Either way, that looks easy enough to do. So I'll pull those brackets loose. We'll get this frame cleaned up so that we can actually put some good marks on it and make a plan to cut and section this, this frame and, and slide things back together. And we'll have to figure out a, a good plan to Z-cut this frame and how to measure it out. And I think we'll probably draw it, maybe do a test before, just to make sure everything's going to come together like I think it's going to. And then that way... I only measure like nine times and cut once, so we don't have to try to weld the metal back on. Uh, anyway, cue the uh, fast forward action.
I think we're about set to go here. So I pulled the drive shaft out. Uh, pulled those two, or pulled the one fuel tank bracket out, and the exhaust mount is loose over there. Uh, pro tip on pulling the drive shaft: pull the rear off the differential first, and then when you go to take those two U-bolt clamps off the two U-joints that tie the transmission to the drive shaft back there. Uh, you can just spin the drive shaft by hand as long as the transmission's in neutral and you're not stuck trying to like roll the truck back and forth or anything. Um, besides that, it looks like we got some pretty clean real estate here to, to cut against. The only other things to contend with it looks like are going to be a uh, brake line to shorten, which Ford already put a fitting here where it looks like they wanted you to shorten the bed. And so we can take this apart here, move this fitting back, re-flare the line, and put it back together. We just have to be careful not to cut this when we cut it. Uh, they got some interesting plastic wire fittings here that just uh, stab to the frame and have a piece of metal that kind of like expands as it goes through the frame. So those just pop right out. They had a couple of clamps here that held this brake line in place. They look like they're going to be pretty easy to reuse, maybe pop a couple more holes in the frame, maybe not even that. Okay, so we're going to go over how I'm planning to cut and section this frame. So the bed bolts down to this oblong hole here. So I'm going to come back off that hole about three quarters of an inch and then we're going to start laying a pattern out here. So there's three quarter. So now from here, we've got about 21 inches, the reel looks like. So 21 inches from that mark brings us to here, it looks like. Seems super inaccurate. There's <clears throat> 21. I'm just picking 21 because it's a good section of straight frame here where we've got a nice flat top. We don't have any indentions to deal with. There's a like a indention that starts here. I like to stay out of the way of that out of the way of cutting the spring shackle. Um, I don't want to cut this front hole because this is the bed hole where the bed actually bolts down. And I'd like to not disturb that at all. So I'm going to say our overall workspace here is going to be 21 inches. So the bed and the frame have to get shortened by a total of 16 inches. So I've got 21 inches to work with. I want to do a Z, a Z cut in the frame so that when the frames when the frame comes back together, you end up with this like Z. How does that look? This. So we take out these sections of the frame, and it would slide together and become one frame again. And I'm hoping that gives us the most strength. Problem is, the math challenge here is taking 
16 inches out of 21 inches and leaving the Z together. My plan was to like have a 32 inch straight section I could work with and just take like 16 inches out of here, 16 inches out of here, slide them together and wham bam done. Well that's not exactly possible and we only have 21 inches to work with total. Alright, so I'm just going to transfer this 21 inch mark down. And this one. I'm using a chalk marker to do this, so I like these chalk markers. This is some bistro thing. I just steal these from my wife. I think she buys them at Hobby Lobby. She wonders where all her markers end up. They're all out here in the shop. Alright, so 21 on the money. So I need to find the center point this way. You can't, the way I have the truck sitting, I can't just put a level on it because the it's sitting on the tires so the truck has a good rake to it right now. So it's running so the truck's running downhill right now. So if you were to put a level on it, the level is going to give you this kind of weird cut that's not in line with the frame here. So I like to keep these these surfaces, obviously, of the frame. You want to keep these parallel when they come back together. Um, so to do that, we're going to find the center point here. And this looks like it's pretty much six inches on the money. We'll confirm that. Oh man, it's like right on six. So center point there is going to be three. Put a mark at three exactly. Then up here the frame gets a little bit wider. There's like a step down in the frame. And you see most guys that cut these frames end up having to uh, contend with this little step down when the six inch part of the frame comes into this thicker part of the frame. I don't have a workaround for that, but we're going to work through it. So this is right at six and three eighths here. So six and three eighths here, and this was six inches here in the back. So the six and three eighths to find the center of that was obviously going to be three and three sixteenths, half of three eighths. So I'll put a mark at three and three sixteenths. Three, right at three, three and three sixteenths. So now we find our center point, our center line of this frame here. So you know we've got a good line to cut on for the top and bottom section of the Z. All right. So now we have a center line of the frame. We've got equal parts top and bottom even through here. So now we need to figure out how to, how to Z this thing. So 21, the difference in 16 and 21 is 5. Um, so I believe if I come this way 5 inches, and I come this way 5 inches on the bottom, what I should be left with is a 16 inch section to take out and a 16 inch section to take out. and. We should have a good, a good Z there. So let's check this. So if I say, there's my 16 inch mark right here. Try to make this as roughly accurate as possible. There's a 16 there.
then in theory this should be five inches it's remaining and exactly five inches so we got a five inch section and we got a 16 inch section and then we'll do the opposite on the bottom section 16 here line that up real accurately try to make sure we're good and straight and square 16 So 16, we just measured this, and this should also be 5 again, yeah, it's like on the money, 5. So now, to make this look correct, I think I'm going to try to erase the parts we're not going to cut out. And you guys can see, hopefully, what we're doing. I'm not going to cut that. So now the pink sections will come out of here. We can even erase like this line here. So then everything inside this piece here stays with the frame. This piece here stays with the frame. And then all the sections here will be cut out. I mean, we can mark these in blue. I'm telling you. My wife is like, where are my markers? So then you can see all this stuff is going to come out of here and same thing on top. All this metal on top is going to come out. And my nice girly colors that I have. So with a, a cut here and I cut here and then down on the frame and then opposite on this side I'll cut here cut across down and under the frame whenever this piece of frame touches this piece of frame we'll be removing so as this back section imagine it, I guess it's like this and this will be this way just slide forward, this piece just slides forward into this one. We'll be taking this end here, we'll be touching and stopping against this part of the frame here. So as we take that out, we're going to take out exactly 16 inches. And then the same down here, when this part of the frame touches the existing part of the frame that's attached to the cab right now. Again, we're going to be removing right at 16 inches. And then, as these touch, we can dress these up, weld them up nicely, hopefully have some good strength there. The concern with this would be the distance from here to here, and then here to here. So as long as those are both 5 inches pretty exactly, when this lower wall touches the lower wall 
in theory, the upper wall should touch the upper wall, and you shouldn't end up with one hitting and one having a big gap up here that you got to figure out how to how to weld in. So I'll just make sure that the five inches here is the same as the five inches here. Whenever you cut it, measure three or four times, cut one time, and this should just come together and become one short bed. So I'll clean the other side off. I'll get it marked. I'll uh, put some jack stands underneath here and make some cuts, roll this thing together. Frame's cut. Uh, really looks like it turned out pretty good. Only uh, advice I got is to make sure you walk the back end because as soon as this thing broke free, it was actually kind of tail heavy. You wanted to wheelie up that uh, that old gas can still sitting on there too. Probably not the best idea to uh, be shooting plasma sparks everywhere with a gas tank there. You guys saw that fire I started with the uh, the rag that was sitting back here holding the holding the brake line from dripping so much. So all in all, came out pretty much as expected here. Uh, good clean cut. It did burn these wires. They go to the bed a little bit. So luckily, we got 16 inches to clip out of here and shorten these up a little. Should be no problem. Looks like the looks like the brake line came out nice and clean. No problems. Um, all right. Well, moment of truth. Let's roll this thing together and see how well it lines up. Okay, so here's what's left of the frame. It's gone back together. I got a little out of control with my plasma welding on the bottom side here. We had a the tab was kind of had some excess. I needed to cut more off, so I cut a little more off with a grinder, and things drop right into place here. 
Um, everything looks pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, the frame is kind of a little bit lower right to here, but I think we just weld that and call it good. Same thing on top here. It's uh, a tad taller right here, but nothing that's going to hurt anything. I say we just lay a nice thick weld bead through here, throw the bed back on here, and call it a day. I don't see any, uh, any sort of need to try to go through and cut and section this and try to hammer it back down and risk trying to lower the front of the bed. What is that? An eighth of an inch maybe or something. In the front I say just leave it and weld it in place and come back behind it and put a, uh, a plate back in here on the back side of each one. So I have to clean this off with a, a grinder a little bit. And uh, fill this thing back up. So then, I'm going to make sure it's good and square before we weld it in place here. Uh, so I'm just going to take a few measurements and a couple X cr or cross measurements from the original frame that's underneath the cab that we haven't cut on to the new section that's, well the new section, the shortened section that's now rolled up against the original section. Uh, so just meant to make sure we're good and we're sitting good and square here before we weld it up. Uh, I used the very forward bed mo bed mounting holes to measure this in an X pattern and I just referenced those back to some of the existing um, more rearward bed holes and everything lines up very very well here. It, it looks like it's almost exactly where I wanted it and it was almost perfect so looks like we took exactly 16 inches out of each side of the frame and it rolled up just fine. I uh, found it best to use a ratchet strap and I use a ratchet strap to tie again the bed holes together. I use the forward bed hole that's under the original frame underneath the cab and then I use the one of the rearward bed holes and the bed mount holes and I put enough forward pressure on the two sections to hold them together and then I put a floor jack underneath the rear axle and jacked it up just a tiny bit and that seemed to take enough pressure off of it and like level the frame out that everything lined up very nicely. Um, put a little bit of fitting and finishing with the flap wheel disc on the grinder. Kind of got those burrs out of there and little chunks of imperfections that that plasma left behind and that thing pulled up pretty nicely. Kind of hog out those uh, the seams there, remove the die grinder so we can get a good penetration with the weld. Let that weld really bite into that frame material really, really good. And I'll go ahead and finish weld this. Make a couple plates to throw on the back side of uh, each side here just to reinforce these frame joints a little bit.
All right, so got that all burnt in here. Looks like it made a good clean weld. Really no problems with that one. Worked out pretty good. Had to stop and start there once in the center because it was getting really hot, but I think that'll hold pretty well. I'll make a gusset for the back of it and maybe drill a couple of holes in this thing to put a couple of plug welds in just to make sure that gusset holds on the back of it really well or that I mean, it's not a gusset, it'll be a, a reinforcement plate on the back of it just to give that weld some extra strength and make sure I don't have any problems out of it. So I got both sides burned in now. I made a couple of uh, quick templates out of some metal head laying around. It's about the same thickness as the uh, as the original frame material as it's almost exact which is kind of interesting uh, I just made the quick cardboard template that's all I did here um, and if you guys want to kind of copy this feel free to so this was four and a half sorry four and a quarter inches tall and seven and a half inches wide and I had some templates for my plasma cutter I just cut a couple of uh, like seven sixteenths or half inch squares out of there quickly just as I had a template and it's easy to just psh, 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 bust those things out of there so I'm going to do is I got the inside of the frame all cleaned up and I'm just going to finish burning these in and then I think the frame will be finished so I'm just going to lay this plate in here somewhere here kind of over the main the main joint oh was that the wood on the ground some better light in here. So somewhere in here and I'll just uh, kind of center it up and burn it in. It is interfering a little bit with this uh, this indent in the frame or this factory maybe that's some sort of a crumple crumple zone here. We saw that on the outside too just this bump that we tried to not cut into when I sectioned the frame. So now that the bed has been cut, I need to cut the back four inches out of the frame. So all we're going to do here is lop off four inches on the end of the frame. So it'll just be gone. The problem is that we have to relocate this hole because the bed mounted to this rear hole in the frame to begin with. And the bumper also mounted here. Looks like there was three holes in a kind of a triangle pattern. And there was uh, one forward hole here. And the bumper, I guess, could use either, I guess, any of these combinations. Or one of the rear three plus the front one to stabilize the bumper here. Um, so instead of the front, where both the frame and the bed both lost materials. We took 16 inches out of the bed. The bed got 16 inches more narrow. And we took 16 inches out of the frame right underneath there. And the frame got 16 inches shorter. Um, back here, we're just going to lop the 4 inches off the end of the frame, which means essentially the frame is going to stay in place, but the bed is going to slide over the frame in this scenario. So I'm going to show you what I show you guys what I'm trying to explain here. So this piece of cardboard is the bed, and it's got a bed bolt that bolts it down here. Well. When we come along and just take a random four inch section out of here and say 
we unbolt it and the bed's still bolted up here well we just take a four inch say this is my four inch section here and we're gonna just remove this section so we cut it out and we weld the bed back together we'll pretend this is one bed looks about as good as one of my weld joints does there well now this hole where this bed bolt goes has no place to go through right so we gotta relocate that hole in the frame in order to be able to bolt this bed back to the frame so the forward bolts all still work the back bolt though won't work we'll have to make a hole for it here uh, so the way to do that is just transfer the hole that the bed used to bolt down to the frame we're just going to transfer it forward four inches um, so you could do this before you put the bed on there if you're feeling pretty confident in your measuring abilities I don't know that I'm that confident in my measuring abilities in my cutting abilities my welding back together abilities and how accurate things stayed so what I'm going to do is measure from the center of this hole that we were using uh, this truck did not use this hole so I'm not going to worry about it but it, I'm trying to find the center point of this half inch hole here and then put the center of the hole gonna, the hole I'm going to drill here four inches forward and so I'm going to guess that my whole center is going to be right here I guess if I could get crazy I could say this is uh does it look like it's probably nine sixteenths in from the inside edge of the frame so I come in here and say there's a mark at nine sixteenths and right here is where I think the center of my hole is going to go so what I'll do is I'll put the I'll cut this off of here because with this extra mass sticking out the back you can't actually put the bed on the truck because the rear uh, I guess we'll call it a bed panel or like a sail panel uh, that we see on the back of the bed it'll actually hit here and won't let, won't let the bed come down past the frame to hide the frame like it does in the original configuration but once you cut this off the bed should sit flat on the frame just like it's supposed to only difference is there won't be a hole here yet my plan is to put the bed on here stick a sharpie or something down through the hole and mark it and that way we can see exactly where a hole is if I'm a eighth of an inch or half an inch or something worse off forward or back I can then mark the center of my hole and drill it uh, but for right now I'm just placing my bed on the table saying all my money down on red it's gonna be right here well it's a black pin I guess we'll put all our money on black so these holes here will also have to be moved four inches forward uh, it looks like taking four inches off the back here and cutting away this section that we get pretty close to where this original hole was here so this is the hole I think the bump the factory bumper was using here um, so again these other holes weren't used in this configuration it had that big steel bumper on it I'm gonna go back with a um, like an aftermarket AMD type set of bumper brackets and a chrome bumper so I'm not sure which of these holes it's gonna end up using anyway but we look here from the back of the frame the center of this hole is an inch and three quarters in from the back and then the center of this hole here is roughly and it's just shy of that this is close to inch and a half it looks like so we're trying to relocate this hole four inches forward well those the hole that already exists here center to center is about three and a half not four um, so we could we could elongate this hole slightly, like by a half inch if we wanted to, and get the try to make a slotted um, look like this. Let's see if that works out. My plan was to uh, try to tuck the bumper in closer to the bed. So I think what I'm going to do is hold off on drilling a hole here, as so we'd need. My hope was to take those bumper brackets and actually tuck that chrome bumper a little bit closer and tighter up to the truck here so I'd like to wait until I get those bumper brackets in and get the bumper put it together temporarily clamp the brackets in place and see where the holes fall and then punch the holes in the frame 
instead of trying to just transfer these marks four inches forward based on the amount of material we're going to lose here and take a gamble that it doesn't line up with the new bumper brackets anyway.